Welcome to our meditations on Good Friday. My name's Alex and I hope that you'll follow me as I bring you some words to think about this Good Friday. Some people ask, how is it Good Friday when actually this represents the death of God's own son, Jesus Christ? Of course, the answer to that is that good is a corruption of God. It's actually not so much Good Friday as God's Friday. And that's what it's about. It's about God's will prevailing on this day. And one of the traditional ways of celebrating God's Friday is with the seven words that Jesus uttered from the cross, the seven sayings as he was dying. And we were going to do that at St Mary's to help us think about what the meaning of God's Friday really is. But God had other plans this year. I wonder if you've ever been in a car with some small children going on a journey, maybe going on holiday, and it seems just as soon as you've started off, you hear the cry from the back seats. You know what I'm going to say. Are we nearly there? And there has to be that air at the end. And of course, we try our best to keep the children entertained until we are nearly there. But what they're saying is not so much are we nearly there, anticipating what will be at the end of the journey. But rather, is the journey over? Is this time in the car, which is not that interesting, coming to an end? Are we coming to some sort of finish over this journey? And many of us are thinking that about the coronavirus epidemic. Are we nearly there? Is the journey nearly over? And of course, at this point, we know that there is a fair amount of the journey left. Indeed, we may be remembering the words of Winston Churchill in the Second World War, when he said in a famous speech that what we were celebrating then is not the end. It's not even the beginning of the end, but it could be the end of the beginning. And that may indeed be where we are here. But we don't just want an end to the coronavirus. We didn't just want an end to the war, although we did want that. We want to be conquering. We want to be achieving. We actually want victory in the current circumstances. And that is precisely what the sense of Jesus' last words from the cross were, the last of the seven great sayings. We turn to John chapter 19, the Gospel according to the Apostle John, and look at just three verses, verses 28 to 30. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version that we are so familiar with in our church. John 19, verse 28. When Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfil the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and they held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now, the New Revised Standard Version correctly translates the same Greek word tetelestai in verses 28 and 30 as finished. When Jesus knew that all was now finished, they put a jar, a jar of sour wine and then when Jesus had received it, he said, it is finished. It's the same word in the original. But the word in English finished doesn't really convey what Jesus was trying to say, because in other versions it is translated as accomplished or completed. The reason for that is that the word 
tetelestai was commonly used not in a theological sense at the time of Jesus, but in a commercial sense. It was used in business transactions, in the paying of bills and mortgages. When a bill was paid in full, the word tetelestai was written, or we would say stamped, across the bill saying, it's, it's fine, it's finished, there's nothing else to pay. And the same with a mortgage. When a mortgage was outstanding for a long time and somebody had actually put the last instalment on the property and the mortgage was released, the mortgage deeds were stamped with the word tetelestai. The transaction is completed. It's finished. There is nothing else to be done. Everything that needs to have been transacted has been transacted. It is in that sense that Jesus is using this word tetelestai, which we have translated as finished. You see, Jesus on the cross was paying a price. He was making a transaction, not a commercial transaction, but a spiritual transaction. He was paying the price for the sins of the whole world. And he was paying it in his own blood as the Son of God. It's rather like a clock started ticking for those three hours and every minute more and more sins, past, present and future, were all paid for by Jesus until at the end of that three hours, if you like, the clock ran out and the monitor came to a hundred percent all the sins of the world were paid for as Jesus hung on the cross. And then Jesus said, Tetelestai, it is finished, it's transacted. There is nothing else to pay. And then he hung up his clogs and breathed his last. And that, friends, is why the cross is at the centre of the Christian life because all that we need to have paid in order to bring us into a relationship with the living God has been transacted by Jesus Christ on the cross. Are we nearly there? Well, yes, this video is nearly over. But more importantly, the question is, are we nearly there spiritually? Well, we are there. Everything has been paid for. It's completed. There's nothing else to be done. And for that, we as human beings are eternally grateful. That is the centre of Good Friday, God's Friday, when God had the victory. The well-known hymn, There is a Green Hill Far Away, summarises what happened. And our reaction. There is a green hill far away outside a city wall where their dear Lord was crucified who died to save us all. There was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. And then our response, so dearly, dearly has he loved and we must love him too and trust in his redeeming blood, and try his works to do. Have a peaceful Good Friday.